With many of us turning our hobbies into side hustles and our full-time work into stay-at-home work, the humble garden shed can be a place of refuge for our creative pursuits. But with the added demands of being an office, gym or storeroom, not all garden sheds are up to the task. So I've been given the challenge of reimagining an industrial design student's tiny garden shed into the perfect designer's office and workshop. This garden room belongs to Alex and Madison, who are both parents to an active toddler with a second on the way. Despite Alex's current job as an engineer, he's also studying industrial design at his local university, which often requires tools for model making that aren't particularly suited to young children. The goal is that this activity can be moved into the shed, but the problem is that this space is only about 2.7 meters wide by 4.8 meters long, and it's already being used as both a laundry and storage room for their bikes and garden tools. Apart from also being home to the usual Christmas decorations and half-used paint tins, Alex is also into sports and exercise, and hopes to better use this space to store his tennis and cycling equipment, and also use it to get the occasional workout in. Unfortunately, this garden room is already home to what looks to be a water heater and two large laundry appliances, so stretching this room to do even more than it already does whilst retaining what's already there is going to be no small challenge. First, I had to model the footprint based on the dimensions that Alex provided, but in this case, seeing as he provided external measurements, I had to do my best to approximate the internal dimensions based off an educated guess from the structure. Starting from the entryway, I modelled what looks to be a partially glazed 762 door into the wall, and then I added in the water heater and laundry units. When looking at the condition of the existing floor and the sloped ceiling, it looks as if this outbuilding was extended at some point, as the concrete floor appears to have been poured in two stages, with the ceiling also changing at this location. The deeper part of the space contains Alex's workbench, which appears to be an off-the-shelf, thick-veneered IKEA kitchen worktop that's been placed on top of two kitchen units standing directly on the floor. Directly opposite the workbench, there's also some unconventional DIY shelving that's been fixed to the structure, which I did my best to model according to what I could see from the photos. After that, all that was left to add was the lawnmower, three bikes, and the window, which, when placed all together, gives us a starting point to work from in turning this crowded room into something truly special. I started my usual process of moving everything out of the space and then slowly adding it back in again, a bit like playing Tetris. One of the first things I look to to create more space is to make use of a room's height, so I realised that it's likely that the washer and dryer could be stacked on top of one another using a simple universal stacking kit, which immediately frees up some floor space and utilises the dead space that was in the corner. Bikes typically need space between them when being stored to enable easy access and to avoid them getting scratched or damaged, and seeing as how much Alex enjoys cycling, leaving them like this wasn't an option. When stored vertically on wall hooks, bikes need approximately 450 millimeters of width and 1.2 meters of depth. So seeing as the bikes enter through the door, I decided to place them directly in front of it so there's no need to awkwardly rotate or shuffle them once they're in the space, which should encourage Alex to use them more often. To create this, a simple stud frame could be easily and affordably fixed to the slab and joists and then clad in plywood to create more wall space, which is helpful for adding in more storage and it creates a hard-wearing partition that all kinds of fixings can be mounted to down the line. The next obstacle was the mower, and because it appears that this is the folding kind, I decided to utilise the floor space behind the door for it to stand up in, and as this left an empty space above it, I decided to wall mount the shelves on heavy duty brackets to replace the previous shelving unit. It turns out that the space required for the bike wall is approximately the same length as the existing workbench, so this made it a great spot to place it, as it leaves a flexible open space behind it for working, storing tools or exercising. Despite adding walls usually being something that I avoid, in this circumstance it actually creates a threshold for the entryway, which separates the dirtier outdoor items and laundry from Alex's creative pursuits and his time for exercise. 
Seeing as on this channel I like to imagine how far things can be pushed, I decided to think up some interior design inspiration for the space, in case the budget for it appears somewhere in the future. I started out by placing the static worktop on top of a super wide standing desk from FlexiSpot, which makes it not only more comfortable for seated computer work, but also for standing model making too. As the back wall is also the most prominent in the work area, I thought it would be a great location for a full height timber pegboard, which can be made by drilling equidistant holes in hardwood plywood using a spade bit and timber dowels cut down to size as pegs. Then as this room is to be used for exercise, I decided to include the IKEA LOTS mirror hacks to the wall furthest from the window by using 25mm timber battens, which creates an inexpensive mirrored feature wall to make the room feel larger and encourage its use for exercise. However, there's no reason that all of this functionality couldn't be achieved a little bit more easily and affordably using typical off-the-shelf mirrors and twin-slot shelving for the walls. As this foray into interior design emphasizes the mood rather than the functionality of the interior architecture, I wanted to create a space that leans into the idea of being buried in a dark room in which marvelous creations emerge triumphantly. So I settled on painting the entire studio black as it's a great way to hide blemishes and it also gives those dark cave-like vibes. I then decided to leave the pegs and shelves untreated, with the shelves being made out of simple pieces of ply that are secured to the pegs with fixings or simply fitted with guides. Then finally I started adding in elements for the desk, so I included a cutting mat for model making as well as a laptop and laptop stand as I imagine that Alex plans to work both in here and in the main house. Then for the chair, I decided to include a hard shell option that can take a little bit of abuse, so I opted for the AAC 24 by Hay, which despite being a designer option, its hard molded seat should be able to handle a beating for the years to come. Then I simply added in some LED accent lighting to the back of the worktop and a linear LED pendant light above the desk to illuminate the work area, and I added in some general props to indicate how the space is going to be used, and with that I started up the final final renders to bring the whole concepts to life in Photoshop. As always, when set up correctly, V-Ray does a great job of creating these images. However, much like photographs, they often aren't without their flaws. I first brought the images into Photoshop and got to work using the material maps that V-Ray generated alongside the main renders. Using these, I could choose one of my custom wallpapers for the laptop and experiment with what looks best by changing the file link. I then went about fixing some of the blemishes on the model, like on the chair, and removing anything else that I didn't particularly want to see, and after making a few lighting adjustments, I continued this process of elimination until I was happy with the image and repeated this process until the final images were done. As always, it's so satisfying to see how this whole concept turned out, and I think that this new layout does a great job of maximizing this space's functionality by adding in some much needed versatility for Alex and Madison as their needs grow. As far as the desk setup goes, I think it goes to show that even with a laptop, you can really make a setup look great, and by carefully considering lighting, color, and tone, you can really create a mood that really suits a room's use. I know for sure that dark and moody spaces aren't for everyone, but it was nice to switch things up from the usual bright and airy concepts that you're used to seeing from me. I'm far from being the perfect designer, but I hope that seeing this was inspiring, and I'd love to know what changes you would make if this was your space down in the comments, as no architect is complete without his fair share of architectural criticism. But if you're interested in the full process for how I create these designs, you'll be interested to know that you can get the full length screen recordings over on Nebula for free with a subscription to CuriosityStream who are kindly sponsoring this video. I make content on Nebula because it's an ad and algorithm free video platform that's completely separate from the YouTube algorithm, which allows creators like myself to freely post content without worrying about things like view duration or analytics, and as a viewer, you get all of our usual content plus extended and bonus content with no ads, so the Nebula version of this video has this section removed entirely and there's an additional separate video including the full screen recordings of my process. Nebula is 
bundled for free with a subscription to CuriosityStream, which in itself is the world's leading documentary and streaming platform that has thousands of titles ranging from science to architecture to history, space and nutrition, with series I've enjoyed like Faster, How Cities Work and The History of Home. Using the link below, you get 26% off this Nebula and Curiosity Stream bundle, which works out to be just $1.26 a month, which is the equivalent of like less than half a latte a month. When you sign up, you immediately get access to Nebula 2 through a link to your email, and when you watch my content over there, it's also a great way to support myself and the other creators on Nebula 2, so we can keep making more videos like this one. Thanks CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.